I love Crash Bandicoot. I don't know, man. Like, I describe myself as like a Crash Bandicoot sleeper agent. Like, I don't really wear my love for the franchise on my sleeve as I do, say, Sonic the Hedgehog. But when I get my hands on just a good ass Crash Bandicoot game, man, it's like nothing else. I love the little orange freak. And seeing as Crash himself has had a healthy amount of spin off games, Hell, he's probably the second you think of when you think of mascot kart racers. So why not take a closer look at his spin-off history, and really take the time to examine just who was, and wasn't, playable in all of these. Same rules apply as last time, more or less. We're taking a look specifically at spin-offs with a multiplayer edge to them. Spin-off games, or battle modes contained within mainline titles, with expansive rosters of characters for you to choose from. You know, think of your party games, racing games, battling games, all that type of shit. So no, other types of single-player oriented spin-offs will not be counted for this video. Though for this list, that will only really affect some of the really old iOS and Java games. And the only other rule I can think of that's applicable to this list is guest characters, even if they do appear quite frequently in these games, will not be considered for this list. Sorry Spyro. But that isn't to say this list is going to be straightforward. Because let me tell you right now, with as tumultuous of a history as this franchise has had, these characters get fucking weird, man. I swear, there's gonna be at least one or two characters in here that leave you scratching your head. And let's not forget, we still have a whopping 56 characters across only 13 games to sift through. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please be sure to do the usual, like, maybe even subscribe if you're feeling crazy, and you could even donate to my Patreon. Get access to videos a day early for as little as $1 a month. But enough shilling from me, let's get to that list. We're already starting hot with not just the one-timers, but the biggest collection of one-timers for one game. All from Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. And probably the most eclectic series of one-timers I've ever seen. I hope you like complicated backstories. Already starting with some odd ones, we have Ami, Megumi, Liz, and Isabella. Oh, yeah. Originally background characters in the original CTR, who just existed to hand you trophies when you won, looking like the fucking Chronicles of Laura Sue over here, but have made their first and only playable appearance in this remaster. Followed by Hasty, a gross-looking moose based off a sketch found in a CTR artist's portfolio of designs for the game, which led people to believe this was supposed to be some sort of cut character or something like that, when in reality he was just an idea for a mascot for some airline search engine thingy that snuck its way in there. Then we have Komodo Joe's infinitely less successful brother, Komodo Mo. And then Chick and Stew, two announcer chickens who act as commentators and hosts for a variety of spin-off games. And if you thought the Mario Kart babies were bad enough, we have the additions of Baby Crash, Coco, Cortex, and Entropy. As well as Baby T, the rideable T-Rex from Crash Bandicoot 3. And an original character to this game, King Chicken, a chicken who is a king and a super secret character rewarded for finding a bunch of golden eggs or something. We have the ever humble lab assistant, the Goombas of the Crash Bandicoot series who scream bloody murder whenever you take them out in Crash 1. Love those guys. Followed by another strange case of many on this list, Fixed Rilla Roo. Okay, a little bit of a backstory here. In the Crash Bandicoot party game, Crash Bash, there was a character named Rilla Roo, who we'll circle back to later in this video. He was created specifically for that game, and was literally never seen, nor mentioned, ever again. Though since Nitro Fueled had brought back literally everyone from the franchise into the game, of course they brought back Rilla Roo, but for some reason, he looked like this. Ew. Needless to say, some players were dissatisfied with this new look, so for the game's final update, they released a brand new character named Fixed Rilla Roo. That's right, not a skin, 
not an update to the original model, a whole separate character named Fixed Rilla Roo. Now that's a face you can trust. Which does leave me in a bit of a predicament here. I mean, which one should I count as the real Rilla Roo? The one that looks most similar, or the one that shares the same name? I've decided to go with the one with the same name. So Fixed Rilla Roo is going to be considered his own little weird character for this case. And that's not all they added for the last big update for Crash Nitro Fueled, as they also added the character, and I'm not joking here, I'm not pulling your leg, Iron Checkpoint Crate. A joke character made based off a Reddit post, and the game's final secret character you get for smashing all the Beanox crates in the game. So, yeah, thanks Reddit. Switching games now, we go to our only one-timer from Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Apparently that game had a battle mode. We have... Fake Coco. And now we're already on to the last of our one-timers from Crash Team Rumble. Starting with another odd case, the alternate dimensional counterparts of Tana and Entropy. And although they share the exact same names with no distinctions in Crash Team Rumble, I'm choosing to slot these as different characters because the mainline titles do make that distinction. And for our final one-timer, we have the Crash Team Rumble original, Cat Bat. And with the one-timers out of the way, much like the Crash Bandicoot franchise itself, it only gets more weird and complicated from here. Starting with the two-timers, we have three characters who have only made both appearances in the two CTR games. In fact, all the characters for the rest of this list have made an appearance in Nitro Fueled, so I'll try not to mention it just to avoid being redundant. Anyway, those three characters are Papu Papu, wish he was playable and more stuff. Then we have Komodo Mo's infinitely more successful brother, Komodo Joe, the pride and joy of the Komodo family. And the secret joke character, Penta Penguin, known for such iconic lines as Penguin Year 1 and Penguin Year 2. Then on to Koala Kong and Rilla Roo, the only two characters here with a first appearance in Crash Bash. And then we have Mega Mix, a really cool ass Crash character who I swore would be a one timer, but apparently Entranced on the GBA has a weird Atlasphere battle mode minigame in it. And if you link another Game Boy Advance with a GBA link cable that has the huge adventure on it, you can unlock a bunch of bonus characters from that game, Mega Mix included. Then we have the boss characters of Nitro Kart. Krunk, Nash, Norm, Big Norm, and Geary, while not playable in the home console version, actually were in the GBA version. And right into another strange case I'm gonna have to overexplain, Emperor Velo the 27th, the main villain of Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart. But you see, the issue is, this isn't the real Velo. This is just a robo exoskeleton that he pilots. And this little guy right here is the real Emperor Velo. And of course, where the problems start is in Crash Bandicoot Nitro Fueled, where they not only added Velo as a playable character, but another character simply known as Real Velo, which more accurately represents his real tiny form. But the line starts to blur a bit when you look back at the original versions of Crash Nitro Kart, as you can play as him in both the home console and GBA version, but in the home console version he's clearly in his tiny real form, while in the GBA version he's in his big fat fake form. So what, should I just go off the name and slot him as a 3-timer and real Velo as a weird 1-timer? Or should I go off appearances and have real Velo and Velo both as 2-timers even if not explicitly stated to be different characters? Man, I don't know. Personally, I'm going with the latter, but it's up to you, really. Tell me what you think. Do you even care? All this worry over a green little virtual booger man. What a life I live, truly. Following that, two characters from Crash Tag Team Racing, Pasadena Opossum and Ebenezer Von Clutch, followed by one of the earliest characters in the franchise, Tana. 
Yeah, despite being there since the beginning, it wouldn't be until Crash Boom Bang where she would be first playable, though probably due in part to her just vanishing off the face of the earth after that first game for whatever reason. And for our final two-timer, we have Yaya Panda, the first and only character on this list to originate from a mobile game, Crash Nitro Kart 2. On to three timers now with a pretty cool Crash character, Pinstripe Potoru. He was playable in the original CTR and made a surprise playable appearance in Crash Boom Bang, where he was revealed to be Tana's new boyfriend. What a stud. As well as Cortex's former right hand man, the sometimes good, sometimes bad doctor, and the guy who apparently wrote the Bible, Dr. N. Brio, who was playable in Crash Bash as well as Crash Team Rumble, surprisingly. After which we have Nitrous Oxide, the main villain of CTR and a general nuisance in most other racing titles. He was kinda sorta playable in the original, but only through a Game Shark code. So that leaves his two appearances outside of Nitro Fueled at Nitro Kart and Nitro Kart GBA. And to cap off our three timers, we have some absolute household name fan favorites of the franchise Zam and Zem, Oxide's two goons from the two versions of Nitro Kart. I'm not gonna lie, back when I had no greater understanding of Crash's weird side characters, I caught a random trailer of one of Nitro Fueled's updates and these guys were in it, and I was just like, what the fuck is going on over there? And next, onto our only four-timer, and a personal favorite of mine, Ripper Roo, who appeared playable in CTR and Team Rumble, but also made a surprise appearance in Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart 2, with the worst character model I have ever seen in my entire life. On to the five timers with Polar, Crash's rideable polar bear friend from Crash Bandicoot 2. Weird how prominent they are in these spin off titles, playable in CTR, both Nitro Karts, and Crash Bandicoot Purple. Along with probably, and I mean for real this time, the most popular new character from the Dark Age of Crash, or whatever you want to call it, Nina Cortex, who first appeared playable in Crash Purple, then Tag Team Racing, and then Crash Party Games, a Java exclusive, and then finally Nitro Kart 2 and Nitro Fueled. And now onto our final five timer, really surprised he got this far, we have Entrance, the egg-headed master of hypnotism from the fifth dimension. I stopped asking questions a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, he was playable in Entranced's battle mode, that's kinda hard to say, the Nitro Karts, and Crash Bandicoot Purple. And if you thought Polar's prolificness was odd, then get ready for our first six-timer, Para, Coco's own little rideable animal pal who likewise showed up in CTR and both Nitro Karts, but the difference would be appearing in Nitro Kart 2 and Crash Boom Bang, where they and Polar both evolved into these gross little creatures. Ugh. And last, but certainly not least, we have Dr. Nefarious Tropy from Crash Bandicoot 3. Playable in the first CTR, then had a four game streak all the way from Entrance to Purple, before appearing one last time in Nitro Fueled. On to eight appearances though, starting with Tiny Tiger. The big meathead went all the way from CTR to purple without missing a game, then had to wait a bit for his last two appearances in Nitro Kart 2 and Nitro Fueled. Weird he wasn't in Team Rumble, that should have been perfect for him. Though someone who is playable in Crash Team Rumble, the other of the big Crash 3 bosses, Dingo Dial, who other than missing an appearance in Nitro Kart 2, has the same lineup as Tiny. And for our final 8-timer, we have a character I just kinda never really understood, Crunch Bandicoot from Crash Bandicoot 4. I don't know, it feels like when they designed Crunch Bandicoot, they really wanted to have their own Knuckles the Echidna or Wario for the Crash franchise. 
to have their own sort of anti-hero-ish, cool, strong guy character for people to latch onto, but I don't know, Crunch is always so one note and lame. Especially after Crash Tag Team Racing when they give him that stupid ass Mr. T voice which has never been funny, and they never give him anything to do so he's always just sort of there. I mean, it's cool when Knuckles is just sort of there, but when Crunch is just sort of there, it just kind of feels awkward, you know? Like, who the fuck is this guy? Get him the hell out of here. But anyway, yeah, Crunch Bandicoot is at least prominent in these spin-off games, going from Entrance to Nitro Fueled, only missing out on Crash Party games. Though here we are, already on the nine timers with good old Engine. I feel like everybody loves this silly little rocket headed freak. Being Cortex's right hand man, he was given a lot of opportunity to be playable in these spin offs, only missing out on Crash Bash, Boom Bang, Party Games, and It's About Time. And for our second and final nine timer, we have a character I really didn't expect to be up here Fake Crash. Yeah, I guess they really got a lot of mileage out of such an unassuming joke character, even with his appearances being a bit elusive. Though I imagine he is pretty easy to implement in these, being just Crash Bandicoot with a weird face. At the end stretch now, coming in at 12 total appearances, we have Dr. Neo Cortex himself. Now while going off of previous vids, it is a bit odd seeing a main villain being so close to the top and included in so much stuff, but knowing the series and knowing Cortex, this makes complete and total sense. He's, dare I say, practically the heart and soul of the franchise, just a supremely fun character, and as such, he's appeared playable in almost every single spin-off, only missing out on the battle mode for Crash 4 It's About Time. And here we are at the 13 appearances mark. And for the first time in this series, I'm proud to say, we have a tie for first place, going to both Crash and Coco Bandicoot. Now Crash, yeah, obviously, main character of the franchise, been there, done that, whoop de freaking do but Coco, that's right, through the power of being both the player 2 and the token girl of the series, we finally have a duo playable in all titles, and I think that's just awesome. And that's the video! Thanks again for watching. I know you guys really like this series and I am more than happy to provide. And of course I'd like to take the time to thank my patrons for supporting this channel. Even that foul miscreant Dean. Oh, and be sure to leave a comment below on what franchises you'd like me to tackle next. Or just general thoughts on the vid, I always like reading your guys' comments. Anyway, see ya.